by Studio Wendy at Scrapbook Graphics. Today we're talking about triptychs. A triptych is a series of three images that when put together tell a bigger story than the individual images alone. And we have a set of actions here that lead you through creating your own triptychs. Let's take a look at the action set that I've already installed. And you'll see there's two versions. There's just the basic version here, which creates your triptych with a white border and then a thin black stroke around it. And then there's what's called the papers version, and that's going to allow you to replace that white stroke and that black stroke with papers from your stash, and it will add some drop shadows so that um, the little stack, stack triptych doesn't look flat. And it will add some shadows so that your triptych looks like a stacked set of photos and papers. So it, running it's really simple. Just click on the first action. We're going to run through it twice real quick so you can see the difference. And press play. You get a message telling us that you need to have three photos ready. And that when you're done running it, you'll, you can run one of the blog size or actions if you want to put up your triptych on your blog. So press continue. This reminds us that we need to set our foreground color for the main, um, the outer stroke color here, and the background color is going to be the thick stroke in the triptych. And so you can use any colors you want, just set your foreground color and background color to be those before you start. I'm happy with black and white, so let's just press continue. Next, I'm prompted for my first photo. So I'm going to select the one I want and press place. And when the photo comes up, it will be sized um, down to fit the width or height of the box here. So you want to zoom out and then grab those transform handles and resize your image up to fit. In Photoshop, you want to hold in the shift key when you resize things so you maintain your aspect ratio. And in newer versions of Photoshop Elements, you don't want to hold the shift key in. It's just a little bit different. So when you're happy with the placement, just press Enter and then select your second photo. Again, we're resizing here, placing it where we want and pressing Enter. And finally, we're prompted for the last photo. Then the action will prompt us to save a layered TIFF file. So enter your name and press save. You can leave the compression settings just like they are. LZW and zip will give you the smallest file size. And then you're prompted to save a JPEG. This is set to a quality of 10. You can change it if you want to. And then the JPEG is left open in case we want to size it down for a blog. So if I use 500 pixel images on my blog, I can select the blog action and press play. It's going to add some color pop and some sharpen and save. When this high pass filter comes up, this is what's controlling the amount of sharpen in your image. I'm going to go ahead and press command plus here so that I can zoom in and see my image at the actual size so I can get an idea of the amount of sharpen. And what you're looking for here in this high pass filter is just barely edges of white. You'll see if you drag it down all the way, you're not seeing anything. If you drag it up really high, your whole image comes into view you are looking for just the outer edges of the image to show up in white in your window. And that is going to provide the optimal amount of sharpening. I'm going to drag it up really high again so you can see how when you do that, it really over, over sharpens your image. Pull it back down to one. We want just a basic amount of sharpening there and press OK. The reason we're sharpening is because when you reduce an image down significantly, it adds blurriness to the image. And so sharpening it before we save it can add some of that back in and it won't be quite so blurry. When it pops up, you'll want to append the name here with the number of pixels so you're not saving over the original. And we're done. So we have made a triptych and created a blog size version of it in just a few clicks. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this one. And I'm going to run through the same thing with the papers version so you can see it. We're going to do the same thing first. The first three steps here of adding our images is exactly the same as the last one. We're just going to place them here, resize them and place them.
Next, we're prompted for our first paper. That's going to be the paper that's going to cover the white area here. So press continue. I'm using Studio Mix 32 Storytelling, and I'm going to go into the paper folder here. I want to pick a nice lighter color paper. Let's go with this one. And again, this is set to match the height or the width, so I just need to size it back up. And I can drag it around and position it where I want it to be. Press Enter. Then I'm prompted for the darker paper or the background paper, which in this case I want to be a darker one, so I'll choose the darker brown and resize that up. Press Enter. If you press Enter once and nothing happens, try pressing Enter a second time. Name your file to save it as a layer TIFF file, and then we'll be prompted to save it again as a JPEG file. And that's all there is to making our triptychs. Oh, and you'll see here um, that when we place these photos that it added an inner drop shadow here to make it appear like this paper frame is sitting on top of it. And then we have a slight drop shadow behind this lighter paper where it hits the darker paper. And so that is the triptych actions. And I hope that you have fun playing around with your photos and pairing them together to try and tell a new story um, by creating a triptych. Thanks for watching this episode of Learn It.